Chris Kirster, welcome back. I hope you're doing well, man. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, biggest thing that you took from Nick Saban's press conference? Yeah, I mean, uh, the fact that he mentioned that Alabama uh, can only sign 23 guys this year, uh, that definitely is something to keep note of just because um, in a previous press conference, Saban had said that Alabama could only sign uh, 22 guys. So um, that gives Alabama an, an additional scholarship, and we'll see what happens moving forward. But, um, you know, Alabama did get a, a five-star prospect today in Yavi Anoma out of Maryland. Um, a Jack linebacker, the nation's number seven overall prospect. Um, just Nick Saban continually doing Nick Saban things, getting five stars on board, filling needs. Um, I say overall, it has been a very successful day for the Crimson Tide. Okay, so when we look at that from, from Alabama, because here's the sort of consensus here. Uh, Alabama's not at that number one spot, even though they filled their needs and really you judge a signing class, what, two, three years down the road, uh, Alabama fans are not accustomed to be at that number five spot. Yeah, I mean, definitely not. And, um, you know, I, I've said all along that I don't think Alabama was going to get the uh, the number one spot just because, you know, they, they can't sign a, a full 25-man uh, roster that usually they sign. Um, so, with Alabama ranked uh, five right now, it's not really not that big of a deal. Um, you know, if you're in the top five, you'll still be able to uh, compete for championships. And I, I still think that this class is very talented, and I, and I do believe that Alabama um, will continue to grow moving forward as we get to February and all that. So I don't really think there's anything to worry about about not having the number one class. What is the pool like that is players that did not sign today when we talk about guys that Alabama will target in, in, in the coming weeks? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, Alabama has 15 signings. Uh, three of their commitments didn't um, sign. Um, Nadab Joseph, he was expected to sign today, as was uh, Vernon Jackson, um, a three-star linebacker out of uh, uh, Texas. Those guys were supposed to sign. Michael Parker's likely going to get a blue shirt and in-state guy um, from the Huntsville area. But as far as uh, other targets moving forward with Alabama, um, there's still a lot of um, you know big names out there for the Tide, five-star prospects such as Nicholas uh, petit Prier, Patrick Sertain, uh, Tyson Campbell. So those guys will wait until uh, February to make their decisions. And Alabama is definitely in the thick for all those guys. How surprised were you that Emory Jones did not choose the Crimson Tide? Yeah, I, I had gotten word uh, last week that uh, Alabama was out of it. And um, from talking with Emory actually today, um, he told me that after his official visit um, to Alabama in October, he was leaning toward um, you know, committing and flipping from Ohio State to Alabama at that time, he decided not go through with it. He said that, um, you know, he, he just wasn't ready at the time. And from um, thinking it over with his decision these past few weeks, he just felt like Alabama wasn't the place for him. And this past weekend, he took an official visit to Florida, and that pretty much wrapped it up for the Gators at that point. He told uh, Coach Mullen last night that he was going to be a Gator. Um, and Saban actually said today at his press conference that, um, you know, despite he can't name him by name, but despite name, um, you know, um, losing out on Emory Jones, Alabama w wants to have a quarterback in this class. And I believe James Foster, a, a four star kid from the Montgomery area, um, will be that guy that Alabama targets over these next few weeks. He's expected to make his decision on National Signing Day. Oh, so that will be in February. So give us an update on, on what this young man will bring as far as what you see in him. As far as James Foster you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, 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 right, right. The the quarterback that Alabama went on target. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I do think that um, you know James Foster uh, is a guy that will – definitely needs some work as far as development goes. Um, you know, mechanically, um, he's not fully there yet. Um, I don't think he was, he's going to be a guy that um, you can compete right away for a job. And, and I'm not knocking the kid. I'm just being honest with him. Um, from, from watching him play several times, he's definitely um, a project type of quarterback. But that's really fine because when you look at Alabama's step chart, very young. Um, obviously, Jalen Hurts, sophomore, Tua Tonga by Loa, Mac Jones, both freshmen. So, even with a, a 2018 quarterback joining this roster, it's likely that this um, whoever is the 2018 quarterback won't play for a few years. So, um, even if it's a, a project type of quarterback that James Foster would be, 
Um, you know, he really wouldn't have any pressure on him to play as far as the next year or two years. So, um, you know, getting a guy like him who's from in-state, um, grew up an Alabama fan, Alabama's his dream school, I think that would definitely um, be a good thing for the Tide if it landed James Foster in on February 7th. And literally, as we're talking, you're tweeting as well, and Chris Kirshner is a guy that – multitasking here on the Twitter account. You also uh, <laughs> quoted a tweet, uh, Dominic Wood Anderson chooses Tennessee. So is this Jeremy Pruitt's first win over Nick Saban? Yeah, this is the first win for uh, Jeremy Pruitt over Nick Saban. Uh, Dominic Wood Anderson, um, you know, he decommitted from Texas a few months ago. The reason why he decided to decommit from Texas at the time was because um, Alabama was pushing um, for him to uh, flip from the Longhorns to the Crimson Tide. He didn't. He just decided to back off um, from his commitment to Texas. The one thing I would say about Dominic Wood Anderson, um, definitely the biggest roller coaster, um, wild recruitment of this class so far. Um, he's silently committed to now five schools. Um, wow. Definitely, something, definitely not something that is uh, usual. Um, you know, he told Nick Saban actually the day he uh, committed to Texas that he was going to choose Alabama. Um, Alabama didn't stop recruiting him, um, you know, just because he's that good of a player. Um, and Alabama was confident that they were going to get Dominic Wood Anderson all throughout. Um, but again, he's had such a wild recruitment. Um, not really, obviously, not that, uh, not a recruit who sticks by his word with him, you know, silently committing to at least five schools now. Um, but, yeah, definitely a big pickup for Tennessee in getting the nation's number one junior college tight end. But how awkward is that, that you got a guy that's in your <laughs> building that just beat yeah. the head coach for a prospect? I mean, you, you see what I mean? I mean, I mean I, I'm not trying to stir something up, but, I mean, think about that for a minute. I mean, Jeremy Pruitt just beat Nick Saban, and he's got to go answer to him this afternoon. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not going to be uh, a pleasant conversation, I'm guessing, because – um, like I said, Alabama definitely wanted Dominic Wood Anderson a part of this class, even with him telling Nick Saban the day he committed to Texas that he was going to choose Alabama. So, yeah, I mean, Pruitt you know, gets his first recruiting win over Saban, and I'm sure um, you know, Pruitt's going to have a few laughs um, with Nick in a few minutes when um, the two talk about, I, I guess they're going to talk about what happened with Dominic Wood Anderson. But um, I would definitely love to know, what those two talk about when they talk about that recruitment. Now, you know what? That may have been why Nick Saban was 20 minutes late uh, coming <laughs> into the uh, the press room. Maybe that's what it was. Nick Saban was uh, getting an extra dose uh, of uh, you know that Sabanism. But, uh, Chris, let me ask you in the coming days, because, right, this, this recruiting period will not mm-hmm. end until for, what, another 48 hours? Is anything yep. expected to happen here uh, for Alabama? I mean, the majority of Alabama's uh, commitments are now signees. Um, the two guys I mentioned before, uh, Nadab Joseph and Vernon Jackson, they were expected to sign early. Um, you know, in recruiting, things changed by the day. They could decide to, to go ahead and, and make that um, decision final and sign with Alabama. But um, from what I've been hearing all, all throughout the day, I don't think either of those guys are going to sign during the early signing period. Um, and as far as another commitment, Quay Walker, uh, four-star linebacker out of Georgia. Um, you know, he wasn't expected to sign early, so it's not really a surprise to um, not see his name pop up as a signee. But I was actually told yesterday that um, Georgia was working very, very hard yesterday um, to push his uh, school application through um, to the University of Georgia. They wanted him to flip today. Um, he hasn't done so yet. I know Georgia was working on it yesterday. I know Alabama was... Um, in Quay's ear uh, last night when they when they received word that um, you know Georgia was trying to make this happen, I know they've been talking to him all throughout the day um, to make sure that he doesn't flip because Alabama really wants Quay Walker a part of this class. They think he can play any linebacker position, um, you know, in Nick Saban's three four defense. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Quay Walker if he decides to push off um, signing with any school um, during these next. 48 hours, I, I do think it's a good thing actually for Alabama because I do think um, George is definitely in his ear. So if he does push it off, it gives Alabama more time to readjust 
um, you know, tell him, you know, this is our our defensive coordinator. This is how we see you playing in this in this defense. Nothing's going to change. Um, so yeah, I I do think if he doesn't sign in these next forty eight hours, that it would actually be a good thing for Alabama. Chris Kirshner, let me get your final thoughts. From your perspective, was Nick Saban correct? Is the early signing period a mess? I mean, I, I definitely do think it, it's going to be cleaner moving forward just because this is the first year. Um, you know, coaches don't know what to expect. Um, coaches are preparing for bowl games or playoff games in Alabama's um, case. So I, I do think that moving forward, um, you know, these coaches will have a better understanding of, um, you know, this is how far um, back we need to start recruiting these kids. We need to get an understanding of when they actually plan on signing. Uh, because, yeah, it, it's definitely hectic and a pain for these coaches to have to chase these high school, or, uh, high school kids around who change their mind constantly, um, like a kid like Dominic Wood Anderson. So, um, you know, you, you're going to have those kids who, you know, decide to, um, you know, build up drama, lead coaches on and all that stuff. So um, moving forward, I, I do think these programs across the country will have a better understanding of just how to handle this early signing period moving forward.